clients in pajamas. Boop, boop. All right, you guys. So today we're going to be talking about population dispersion. So how is a population? Remember, population is a group of the same in organisms living together in one area. So today we're going to talk about how that population might be dispersed or grouped within their territory, their area. All right, so there are three main um, types of dispersion that we see. The first one is clumped dispersion. And what that we tend to see with clump dispersion is that all the individuals tend to be grouped in one area or in one spot of their area or in one location within their territory. Now the reason why this might be preferred is because, well, the resources might be um, spread out unevenly in the territory. So we'll see that the population is going to want to stay close to the resources. If there's not as many resources out here, they're not going to spend a whole lot of their time out there. So they want to stay grouped together um, for resources and also for protection. By staying together and staying within this larger group, it offers protection from predators. It also makes it very easy to find a mate. We tend to see this in fish. So when you talk about a school of fish, they're going to stay close to wherever the food source is, whether that is like around a coral reef area. But the school of fish also makes it harder for some predators to fully attack them because it's hard might be hard to figure out where the individual organisms are or they might even seem like a larger organism themselves they're so closely clumped that they might fool other would-be predators into thinking that they're an even bigger predator um, also since you know you have your entire population in that one area easy to get a mate so you can make the next generation so a good fit or a good example would be a school of fish. Right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to avoid that one glare. All right, so the next one would be uniform. And what this tends to look like is more so the individuals are, you know, as the name suggests, pretty evenly spaced throughout the area. So they're uniformly or evenly dispersed. And the reason why this could be is that they're, hey, come here. There could be um, limited resources, but they're not all grouped in one area. They're more so spread out, but again, still very limited, whether it's limited territory, limited food. Let me get that eye goopy out. Oh boy. Anything like that. And a good example of this would be penguins. Like if you've ever seen some of the images of, especially especially like emperor penguins, they're all kind of evenly dispersed throughout this one area where they lay their eggs and have their nests. And it's limited food because they have to go to the ocean to get it. But it's also limited territory to, make, to have their eggs in. So that would be an example of uniform. It would be penguins. And the last one would be random. And that's exactly what it sounds like. It 
there's really no pattern to how the individuals are spread out. Now the reason why for this one is because resources are spread out pretty evenly throughout the entire ecosystem since the resources are more abundant and they're spread out equally there's less competition so there's not as much pressure to be in one area than another and as a result this tends to lead to as we see kind of smaller groupings now this is the least common of the three dispersion methods but we do kind of see this in certain species like trees and plants When their seeds get spread and they take root, they're just gonna grow wherever they can. And they'll either survive or they won't. That's why a lot of times, if you were to actually measure the distance between the trees in the forest, it's not gonna be exactly all the same. So it's not like they're all exactly three feet apart and they're all in nice pretty rows. Instead, you might see like a clump here and then maybe just a few sparse ones here and then a clearing and then another clump because the trees their seeds are going to grow wherever they are able to and the soil is going to be pretty consistent in that entire ecosystem so as long as they have access to enough water and sunlight they're going to be successful um, but I kind of hope that helps you understand these three. In the next video that we have, we'll probably talk about um, populations in terms of survivorship. But yeah, I hope this helped. All right, you guys, you take care of yourselves. Stay awesome, stay safe, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.